Russell Wilson wants what? And you want Mel Kuyper. Yes, you do. On SportsCenter. Right now. I think this is the best division in baseball. Whoa. How's that at Sports Center? We're in Los Angeles. He's Stan. I'm Neil. Tiger Woods on the move. Marty Smith joins us. And our Wilson and Watson moving as well. Lewis Riddick has thoughts. But first, starry, starry night in the NBA. Yeah, we got all-stars all over going head-to-head. MVP candidates Luka Doncic and Joel Embiid on the same court, plus Giannis Antetokounmpo and Zion Williamson in Milwaukee. But let's get started in Brooklyn. Magic there to face the Nets. No Kevin Durant for the Nets for the sixth straight game. But no losses in their last seven games either. You see the offensive comparisons. Advantage Nets. But early on, advantage Magic. Nikola Vucevic puts him up nine. He had a game-high 28 points and 12 boards. Six seconds to go in the first. Timothy Luau Cabarro misses a three. But Kyrie Irving, right place, right time. Nets cut the deficit to four. Let's go second quarter now. Here comes Brooklyn, James Harden. The Nets, 20 of 45 from deep. Three minutes later, with the Nets up one, Harden stepped back three. He was five for 10 from three. That's five consecutive shots converted for Brooklyn. Later, Nets leading by four, and their run continues. Irving make it seven straight shots for the Nets. Just over four minutes to go in the first half, Nets up five, Harden. His third three of the quarter, he had 20 points for the game. Nets made nine consecutive shots, they're now at 10 40-point quarters this season, time their most in franchise history. Early third quarter, Nets are up by 23 at this point. Irving comes up from behind and rips Vucevic. Turns defense into offense, 27 for Irving. Nets win 129 to 92. Their win streak is at eight, the longest current win streak in the NBA, and the longest for them in 15 years. So let's take a look at that streak. It's their longest since winning a franchise record 14 straight games in 2006. Seven of those wins have now come without Kevin Durant, who's been out with a hamstring injury. And that's just downright scary. This is Brooklyn's 14th game scoring 125 points, the most in the NBA, and already tied for the most in a season in franchise history. 11 of those games have come since they've acquired James Harden. Thursday's game, Harden's 20th as a member of the Nets. He's the second player. This game. Uh, just our effort, honestly. Uh... And just knowing that we just had to settle in, that's all. Um, and we needed it too. It is, it, not every game is going to start like that. That, or excuse me, start the way we would like with everything going down. Or, um, and you know, I, I got to apologize too. I'm, I'm trying to think, and I just got out of the cold tub, so I'm like shivering while I'm up here. Um, but yeah, we we can't start every game like like how we started the rest of the games during this kind of streak. So we, we just got to turn the next page and we put a few possessions together and then we ended the first quarter well um, and I feel like that put us in position um, to take control of the pace of the game. So this, this NBA schedule this is a grind you guys have not long came off of a long west coast trip eight wins in a row what's the key to maintaining this level of focus during this run? Uh, well number one is just giving all glory to God and make sure that we Stay humble during these, uh, you know, during these games. It's, it's, um, you know, a privilege to go out there and be able to perform after you prepare, um, you know, with your brothers. And you know, it's a total team effort. So we we just want to stay collectively uh, aligned on this on the same goal, and that's just to play, uh, you know, to a certain level that we can all commit to. And I said that the last time, it's just we all hold each other accountable and, and we just want to have that consistency um, and have fun doing so. A lot of smiles with the effort that we put on out there, um, you know, playing in front of our fans that are here in Barclays and also at home um, and also foreign. And, you know, we're huge, 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 huge team. Um, so, you know, a lot of people want to see us do well, put on show for them. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Uh, I know it's a, a comprehensive team win, but I'm curious if you could touch on what you guys got out of Nick Claxton and what you've seen from him. He's complimenting you on how you've been leading and helping him out. Yeah, Alchemist. Yeah, the young Alchemist. He's uh, number 33. He, he's just learning from all of us uh, day by day, and he's been uh, working extremely hard to get back on the floor. 
and he, he wants to earn his playing time and wants to go out there and do um, what he can to provide um, whatever's needed. You know, and that's Nick. He, he's, he's a great young man, and, and we want him to continue to develop a, as a person first. Um, and then when he's out there with us on the floor, you know, he's around high IQ basketball players, and this is the best of the best. So we just want to pass on the knowledge so he can carry it on when it's his time, however many years from now. But with us here, it's, it's part of our uh, purpose to continue to help him. Um, and he's doing a great job of just receiving the information and applying it. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, Kyrie. Uh, Bruce was saying the other game that you kind of go to him either in practice or before a game, and you say, you know, you need one three out of him a game, and he kind of takes that to heart. Uh, I'm just curious about what you've learned about leadership in your last stint in Boston and even in Cleveland that you've been able to apply here as one of the leaders of this Nets team. Uh, well, one, I think, you know, there were a lot of people speaking for me or um, speaking on my behalf that really don't or really didn't know who I was. And... I didn't offer that access to a lot of people because it's just a trust. You know, it's just leaks here, somebody saying this here, in, in Cleveland and in Boston. And I'm not going to sit here and talk about Cleveland and Boston because I know what that goes, where that goes and where that can go in terms of who you're talking about, what you're talking about. So I'll just generalize it. What I learned from those experiences was, you know, if you're not enjoying the journey and you're not committed the way that you would like to be committed, and, and I mean every day, you know, even when you're tired, even when you're having good days, bad days. And, um, you know, you got to be able to galvanize the group even when it's low and even when it's high. It's just the balance of leadership, you know. And, and there isn't one leader, you know, and I've had to accept that too. It's not on me to lead the group by myself and be the hero that everybody wants to because that's what America is. That's what this world is. They love to build you up, love to tear your ass right down. And um, I'm great to be in my. I'm, I'm grateful to be in this position to be able to set a better example now um, than I did then. And I take accountability for, you know, not necessarily stepping up to the plate or stepping up to the responsibility um, for my own actions. You know, I had a lot to do with the success and failures of the teams that I was on. I take, um, you know, my role very serious in, in terms of that, and, and um, I've been able to learn lessons from that to give to others. And um, that's been the most beautiful part is just to learn. Uh, that's the growth. So I'm just more excited about that than anything. And it's been able to um, translate here with the guys that are here. And, you know, I, it's always been bigger than the game for me is what I'm saying. So leadership um, now is just about having fun and giving those guys the energy, galvanize the group. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Rachel Nichols with ESPN. Hey, just to follow up on that, as someone who's watched you in those other places, your comfort level right now is pretty obvious, it's pretty off the charts. What What is it about the environment you're in right now that leads you to feel the way you feel? Uh, well, it, it's not so much the environment here. It's just life. You know, it, life has hit differently for all of us during these times. So uh, I don't want to take any day for granted. Um, I don't want to take any relationship for granted. Um, I, I just really want to see everyone do well in our world um, and heal, especially uh, during these times when we have just so many individuals losing loved ones. So it, it's it's not so much about the game anymore. It's just more of us about caring about your neighbor, your fellow human being, and being there, um, and then uh, doing your part to make the world go round. You know, I know a lot of people enjoy watching us play and enjoy watching me play, and it's an honor. And I give all the glory to God, like I said. So when I'm out there and I'm able to, you know, give the next generation or uh, even people older than me inspiration while I'm out there playing, then I feel like I'm doing my job. The wins and losses will come regardless. The criticism will come. The greatness will come. Um, and I welcome all that, but uh, with just being rooted in who I am. I'm not going to change for anybody or any moment, um, but I'm very flexible to understand everyone what's going on. So I think I've been able to um, just just really be who I am. That's been the been the thing. And on the tip of